welcome back to oh shit <laughs> i forgot the <laughs> intro to the show hello everyone welcome back to shonen archive i'm woki and i'm your Zenra. hello what's shonen archive i'm glad you asked shonen archive is a series in which me and zen have dedicated ourselves to watching every single shonen jump a series out there starting with our main series being Gintama, also talking about Jujutsu Kaisen and Kuroko's Basketball, and today we're going to be talking about Gintama, uh, which is going to be episodes 185 to 189, uh, and before we start that, I just wanted to break a quick mention before I forget, <clears throat> uh, rest in peace to uh, Jumpudi Heroes, which is going to be leaving us, or Jumpuchi Heroes, however you want to say it, um... It's, it announced a shutdown a while ago, but I forgot to bring it up. That series is the only... It, it's the reason why Shonen Archive exists. Yes, so, it is. Yeah, it 100% is. So it unfortunately is going to be shutting down. Was never able to get Jujutsu Kaisen, unfortunately. <laughs> Still waiting. No, it got, it's weird that it got so many new characters close to the end. It got, like, uh, Sakamoto it, Days, of all things, got in there? They got Gear 5. Yeah, they got Gear 5, like, right before it died. Yeah, um, yeah. It was, it was insane, the amount of, I really did think that they were going to get there eventually. It kind of threw me off guard, but once I saw the message out there saying, like, hey, there's nothing in the data mines, I was like, oh, no. It's it's gone. It's it's going to be leaving us. Very, very sad. Very unfortunate. And without it, um, we wouldn't have had this show. And uh, I really like Gintama, and I really enjoy recording for Shonen Archive, so I have to at least show some form of thanks for uh, for the game. So yeah, it was, it was, it was it's a fun game. Um, it, it was. It was sad. To, sad to see it go. Sad to see any game go, but especially like I think that was the last um, yeah. the last bastion of jump crossovers, right? Yeah, it really is. I talked about this before with someone on the Discord where he's like, well, well they're just going to make another one. I'm like, are they going to make another one? Because it's been over five years since the last Shonen Jump Gacha game. I think this was the last one. I think they Even if they do make another one, that's exhausting, man. It of is. Like, how many times do you have to pick up a Jump crossover, put in all this time and effort into it, and then it gets cut just for them to go make another one? And like... Dude, yeah. gacha games aren't like non-intensive tasks you know what i, I mean know. yeah and it it's never it's it's also a very it's uh, i don't know if sunken cost fallacy is the right word for it but the problem with a lot of them is is that they have to actually pay for the licensing that they get from them so that means that the reason why so many of them are expensive is that because the weird way that japanese copyright works is that they have to actually pay for the licenses of everything like it's not just like it's not like disney where it's like you look at disney and you look at kingdom hearts and they go like oh yeah they have all those disney characters that's fine for shonen jump it's different it's every single person has to basically be paid like you can't that's why in uh dokkan Aureli never came back because they have to actually pay for the license for doctor for dr slump which i know you're saying right now isn't Aureli a canon character to dragon ball yes she is but technically she is a dr slump character so they have to actually pay. And yes, Akira Toriyama worked on both. Does not matter. <laughs> they have to pay for both if they want both of them. So it ends up being the system where it's like, yeah, if you want one piece, you want these, you want that. You have to actually pay for them all. So that's why a lot of the times you release the Dragon Ball units, you release the One Piece units, you release the characters you know are going to be popular. Because those are what keep the servers running. <laughs> or, yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's very tough. And like you said... So many of them just don't last as long as you want them to. It's a real shame. And yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of the longest lasting gotcha that's probably like it. It was Jumbuchi Dokkan's Heroes up there. Also. Yeah, Dokkan is definitely up there for surviving Shonen Jump games. Um, um, like but all the other the, all the other ones are Bleach. Maybe the, the Bleach the Bleach one has lasted I, like a I long time. I want to say Brave Souls came out after Dokkan. It definitely um, did. Um... The JoJo so game that lasted Battle like eight came years. came out in 2015. Yeah. It's going to be getting into its knife anniversary, I believe. Brave Souls 2016, so very close. Um, yeah. But not quite there. Uh, what else is there? All the JoJo ones have finally died. Stardust Shooters made it like seven years, but it yeah. did finally die. Um, um, Naruto one, obviously the most famous one to have died. 
Because yeah, it, Naruto it, Blazing. Yeah, Naruto Blazing went out Blazing. <laughs> there are a couple Naruto ones out still, but I don't know that they're particularly popular. No, they're not on the same level as this one. One Piece obviously still has Treasure Cruise and uh, Bounty Rush, which is like the example of a gacha game that they actually worked on and like has slowly picked up steam. As opposed to, like, most gacha games debut and then how well they do in the first, like, couple months or so dictates how well they're going to do from then on. It's very rarely a case where one debuts kind of, like, low-key and then gets big over time. This one was definitely a case of that one. And I'm surprised a bit. I, I have to think it's because of One Piece specifically, the series. If it was any other series, it might have struggled a little bit more and not been able to, ca to, like, get off of the hype of, like, Gear 5 and stuff like that. That's my my theory anyway. My gotcha theory. Uh, patent pending, patent pending. But yeah, <laughs> there, yeah, there's just not a lot of them, <laughs> and it's very hard to see how many of them are living uh, nowadays. It's it's gotten much harder. But either way, just want to say goodbye. See you next time. Thank you very much. If it was not for them, we wouldn't be continue doing this show. So, all right, Zen. Let's get into the episodes. After building up Jumpucci, thank you, Jumpucci, for giving us episode 185, which is maybe one of the <laughs> one of the most episodes of all time. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it sure was. So, uh, uh, is so two yeah, two parter. Uh, part one is hometowns and boobs are best thought from afar. Yeah. So good luck with this one. It's actually called. Yeah, hometowns and boobs are best thought from afar. I don't know what that has to do with either of these, but that's I, fine. I, um, uh, I, well, when you think about it, the dudes on here do kind of look boobish, like the Oompa Loompa looking dudes, but they also have their wangs hanging out, so yeah. maybe... Well, they're covered by mayonnaise. Yeah, they are. Yeah, not... Yeah. Well, maybe maybe so he was just trying to. Uh, they, they do a, it's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory par factory parody. Uh, he uh, kind of yeah. wants to go to the Marin Mayonnaise Factory, Marin, yeah. and there's golden tickets in the mayo, and so he tells all of the Shinsengumi they have to eat at least five bottles of mayo a day to get through all the tickets. Um, and then uh, like they're like bathing in it and like brushing their teeth with it because they refuse. Oh. Like there's a sick bay full of them where they're like. No, yeah. no more mayonnaise. <laughs> Please um, let it in. Kill eventually, me. Yamazaki finds the ticket. Um, and then Okita's like, hey, great job, Yamazaki. You found the ticket. You should you should take that and go to the Felic just to shit on um, <laughs> Hijikata. On Hijikata. And then uh, Kondo comes out and he's like, we all know that you wanted that ticket, Hijikata. You can take it. Go on, take it. Uh, and then I don't remember what kichikata said but he, he was gonna call kondo a gorilla and he stopped himself and kondo's reaction is funny as shit because he literally just goes were you about to call me a gorilla i said all that nice stuff about you and you're still <laughs> gonna call me a gorilla are you serious <laughs> and then it just cuts to him at the mayo factory and he's like fantasizing about how it's gonna be like this charlie and the chocolate factory-esque experience uh, and then it ends up just being like a normal factory tour, and he's like super <laughs> depressed about it. And I'm pretty sure the the episode ends with him just like sadly walking away from the factory. Yeah, he walks away going Myrene, and he falls to the floor completely in shambles. Um, yeah. So big fan of uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory over here. Um, this one was like real, like the end got me. I really did like the end and some of the other bits of it, but for the most part, wasn't for some reason just wasn't feeling it. No, I'm not 100 percent sure why, but uh, it was it's it's really weird where it's like this is one of the very few. Ca and I could even tell like all the things that like they were making fun of, like oh yeah, this is just like how Veruca got her things because she was in the nuts factory and she made them all. Her dad made them all open up chocolates instead of nuts, and that's how they got it. But I don't know, maybe it's something where it's a case of, like, maybe I wanted an actual Charlie and the Chocolate Factory type experience, and then what I got was a setup for a joke. And to be fair, I really did like that joke, but for some reason wasn't super hidden. Maybe it was these weird guys. Maybe I never got behind their weird Oompa Loompa mayonnaise dudes. <laughs> or maybe it's because... Yeah, he's kind of weird. He he has, like, a loincloth that's, yeah. that's mayo. It's, it's based off um, of the original designs of the Oompa Loompas back when they were mega racist as opposed to uh, <laughs> orange dudes. <laughs> 
and man, it's 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 really unsettling whenever that thing picks up the mayonnaise and just starts like sucking on it to like just drink it like straight. Yeah, and I'm like, no, this is not. I'm not here for this. Yeah, and I also did like that moment, like you said, with when Okita was just like, "Yo, Yamazaki." Yeah, when he was like saying, saying he's like, "Yo, enjoy that ticket." You know, I know you would really want to go Hijikata, but you would never take it from a subordinate, right? That just wouldn't like you wouldn't buy all this male yeah, stuff Okita just to just force him. Like fucks him over. Yeah. <laughs> And he hits him with such logic that he just goes, uh, 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 like his entire worldview comes crashing down. That was funny. Like you said, the part with Kondo was really funny. But yeah, overall, I thought it was okay. I was just like, yeah, this this is going on. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, it was fine. It was, it was very much a nothing episode, but I really liked Jikata's like childlike wonder, just getting crushed. Yes, that that, that yeah. Was. But that that hard realization, especially because of how much it is just straight up a man. <laughs> Like the, the the part the reason it's so funny is to me is because the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory idea of like a child like wondering of like oh yeah I want to go to the factory there and then when you actually go, it's like a legitimate ass factory yeah then, it's just a regular factory with like a conveyor belt yeah and then, like the, models of men is and then the people on the tour is like let us all take you to the ending part and then the, one of the people who are on the tour is like I hear they give us mayonnaise at the end yeah but as a as a gift shop at the end you get mayonnaise. <laughs> Like, that was funny. <laughs> that was good. But, yeah, overall, it was okay. I, I, didn't, I didn't think it was uh, actively bad. But, like you said, it's just kind of one of the ones where it's like, yeah, Hitchikata, Kondo, funny. Okay. All right. Fair enough. That was part A. Now, let's go to part B, which is... Oh, God. The whole peeing on a bee sting is a myth. You'll get germs, so don't do it. Go ahead, son. So, first of all, I didn't know that was a myth. I had always heard it was jellyfish things. I also thought it was jellyfish, too. Have you ever been stung by a bee? No. I've been stung by a bee. And the last thing in my head was ever thinking, I need to pee on this, because I was in extreme pain. <laughs> I was. I never knew that uh, that this was a thing. And also, I would not feel great about having it. Especially because there's no poison in it, right? No, bees do have some some type of poison that makes it hurt, but uh, it's not like it's not like a like spider poison where like it's gonna kill you. Okay. But yeah, it, uh, and they that do point... inject you with something because that's how you're allergic to it because whatever they stick you with. Oh, uh, okay. I I guess that you have the reaction. To. I guess at the end of the day, I th- if, how would you want to be? Do you want to have like a bee sting in your hand, or do you want to ha- that kind of like pains a little bit, or do you want a bee sting in your hand that pains a little bit and now it's been pissed on? <laughs> yeah, like I can't imagine it. No. any better i don't know but anyway <laughs> go ahead Zed. um the odd jobs crew get called in to do like bee extermination because mm. like hey there's a huge beehive and we need you to get rid of it um and like they don't really want to do it then kagura kicks the beehive and they there's a good bit where uh gintoki and shimpachi like collapse to the floor and they're like hey d- does playing dead work for bees what's <laughs> happening <laughs> Uh, and they're, like, throwing flowers at each other to, like, put pollen on one another so the bees will go to them instead. Um, the opening explanation from Gintoki where he, he's, like, talking about wasps. And he's like, these guys fucking suck. And there's a graphic that's really funny of a beehive getting shot by a bunch of wasps with guns. Mm. It's really good. Um, eventually, they realize that the beehive is populated by bee aliens which are just like Yakuza dudes, but they have bee stingers and wings. Uh, and their queen is killed when the... Uh, oh, QS3. I don't remember the pun. It what was like it? QS3. It was like instead yeah, of a QS, PS... The, yeah, the something station 3. It was a, it's a PS3 parody. And it falls on her head and kills her. Um, and this is the original fat model too. So yeah. you know... <laughs> I it, thought it she was... It was too heavy! <laughs> it was too heavy! Um... And it falls on her head and kills her. And so they're like, all right, all we got to do is get another queen so they won't destroy the world. And so they find another one. And Gintoki has maybe my favorite line in the whole series where he's like, Kagura, stay here and don't do anything because nothing good happens when you move. <laughs> and then he immediately falls and knocks the nest down. And that queen is killed when the Z-Box lands on her head, which is just the Xbox 360. Um, because, again, it's very heavy. Then there's a third nest. Um that they end up knocking over. I I don't I think that one's just like a they accidentally bump into it or something. I don't remember exactly what happens, but it's not like they actually do anything. It just like goes flying. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, and then the queen of that one gets hit in the head with the owie, which is a Wii parody. Uh, and and she this... doesn't die because the Wii <laughs> is slightly lighter than the other console. So true. I was looking so at this she like... Lives. <laughs> I was like, this is the most <laughs> accurate statement ever. A 360 would yeah. add a PS3 would fucking kill you, but not, yeah, <laughs> not a Wii. But the Wii would not kill you. Um, <sighs> and then the other Yakuza Bs show up, and they start a giant war about which console is better, and then they all die. And then the the trio says a prayer for them in the night sky. The who the priest who came out in a in a rap outfit, which is just the Zura outfit from when he was doing the Zura rap. Um, <laughs> he's like, I'm ready to start the rap because at the beginning he's like, What if we chant for you? He's like, Don't do that. That's too scary. Okay, what if we rap for you? Will you do it? He's like, Okay, fine, whatever. And then at the end of the episode, they come back. He's like, Okay, we're ready for our rap now. <laughs> we're ready to do it for you guys. It's like, no, just say a prayer for it. Um, for this one, I liked all the bits where it was all related to the consoles. <laughs> when the QS3, when they start, like, arguing about, like, why did you buy a QS3? It's like, I know it's because of this. They, like, mentioned, like, an actual PlayStation game that was, like, a, um, like, an idol type game. Or oh, a, that was a vis- the Z-Box. Yeah, he was like, why did you get the Z-Box? You should have gotten the Nintendo DS. Yeah, which is really funny like, because... you wanted to play Idol Master. <laughs> idol, which is the only reason someone in Japan would ever buy an Xbox 360. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what i was so impressed about it was like what are they what they mention because it's the xbox is typically very unpopular um to the point where which is really funny because i remember seeing an episode where it was like japanese um voice actors playing video games and when they were talking about the original xbox they called it the titty box because that's what had dead or alive extreme beach volleyball on it it was the only console that you could play <laughs> that had that game on it <laughs> So it was. Uh, they have some specific games over there, but Idol Master is definitely one of the ones where it's like, yeah, that's the one of the reasons you would buy a 360 over there. Uh, the QS3, they said, I I forget, it, but it was like it was for a game that you could find on a PSP. It goes like, no, I got it for what was basically Metal Gear. It's like that's bullshit. You didn't get it for Metal Gear. <laughs> you got it for this one. Don't lie to me. Um, that's really funny. I like the bit where the reason why that they're at war with each other is because they can't agree about oh I can't agree with each other on which console is best. <laughs> so they just start fighting the shit out of each other. Um, and yeah, I like the 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 bits where they were disturbing the nests, uh, especially the part with Gintoki where he tells Kagura to not get involved and he immediately makes it fall, <laughs> which is really funny because it doesn't even make it fall like a little bit; it goes on full. It rolls down a hill. Yeah, it like shatters through the wall. <laughs> it's ten times worse than whatever happened to uh, Kagura. Uh, and yeah, I also like that when it came time to all the dead bees, they're like, we need to have a solemn vow. It actually gets like really quiet and they put on the sad music <laughs> for these console bees. Yeah, it's like the, yeah, the set, and they, it's like a slow-mo war too. They have like swords and they're like murdering each other. Yeah, and they're like, look at the... F- the, f- the- this pol- the statement on the this, the fealty of war and it's about console wars instead of actual wars. Uh, and yeah, that bit when they're like saying goodbye, they're saying their peace, and they're saying rest in peace. And then we find out the two that were ta- knocked out by the PS3 and the 360 are actually alive. And they're like, where did everyone go? It's like I don't yeah. know. And they're just playing on like their little con- their handheld consoles. They're, they're and- playing on DSs. Yeah, they're playing yeah. Monster Hunter. <laughs> Like, all right, let's just go to the cafe, I guess. And, like, they're just, like, uncaring about what's happened to everyone. <laughs> so, yeah, I ended up liking this one um, a lot more. I thought it was a, f- a funny and a good time. How do you feel, Zen? Yeah, it, it, I thought it was very stupid until the console joke came all the way through. Mm-hmm. And then it ended up being really funny. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the console war. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, uh, yeah. All right, then. That was episode 185. Let's move over to 186, and which is the start of the Rokaku arc, which is actually based off of a real Shinsengumi incident, which is the Ikadaya incident. But this time, they've been it's been renamed to the uh, Rokaku. Uh, go ahead, Zen. Start with episode 186. 186. Uh, Okita buys cakes and... Um... He's like walking out and he's giving this monologue and he's like uh, talking about something death, about death you know, like, uh, the evils of life and how he's a like, killer in his war and all that stuff. Uh, he gets stabbed by a girl walking by and he like 
starts to fall, and he's like with a with a smile on his face. He he knew he had no right to ask to be happy after he'd killed so many. Then he's revealed that he's not injured at all, and he does like a really a dramatic backflip and like grabs her and smashes her into the floor. <laughs> Uh, and it turns out that she had only stabbed him in the bottle of hot sauce that he was going to pour into all the cakes. Um, and then he ends up delivering her and the cakes to the Odd Jobs crew. Uh, he did, in fact, lace the cakes with hot sauce because he um, just wants to fuck with them, I guess. Uh, he goes to leave, and he tells the girl, like, hey, if you if you ever show your face around me again, I'll kill you. Like, I, I won't stop myself or whatever and she's like all messed up kagura goes to eat the cakes and she pounds like 10 of them before she realizes that in fact uh <laughs> it had they are ma- like laced with tabasco sauce and she's like her mouth is on fire and she's screaming that she wants to murder him now too um they go to an amusement park and they find a mascot getting beat up by a bunch of kids the kid like beating the shit out of them and they're like trying to talk about to him about the the incident that the woman is talking about and he's like giving all this exposition while he's getting his ass beaten by a bunch of children yeah and, um, and elizabeth in the background the as well <laughs> mm-hmm. and he gets all pissed and all the kids run away and it's really funny because one of them punches shimpachi in the dick because it runs by <laughs> <laughs> um they explain then uh or he explains to them that the entire anti-foreigner faction group was wiped out by five Shinsengumi members, and Okita did most of the murdering. Um, we we find out that the young girl's mother died from exhaustion taking care of her after the father was killed in this incident. Um, they are looking through records of the incident. It's uh, Okita's doing that, and he's like looking back through the, the trying to remember, I guess, exactly what's going on. Um, and then another guy shows up to him and he's like, oh my god, you were stabbed. Where were you stabbed? Was it in the ass? Was it anal? Was it up the anus? <laughs> and okay, he's like, all of those are the same thing. <laughs> he, also, he also takes off his pants. Which is yeah, he literally pulls his pants off. And then Okita's like, if you don't get away from me, I will stab you for real. And then he turns around and shoves his ass out toward Okita and he's like, yes. Please. <laughs> um, I don't and need gay subtext. I just the only gay. other survivor of the incident it was that guy and Okita. Um, Yamazaki is like, oh, I, I gotta tell Hichikata about this, and he gives him the report for it. And then we see Okita sitting on a park bench, and there's a gun pointed to the back of his head. And he's like, oh, it must be you. You must be the one that put the girl up to trying to kill me. And then it was Kagura <laughs> with her fucking <laughs> umbrella. Uh, but then the, the the bad guys, the evil gang, shows up, uh, and they have a sword to the girl's throat, and they're like, you better come with us or we'll kill her, so Okita and Kagura give up. Um, and then they are taken in by the, the, the gang, or taken away by the gang, and they want to get revenge on Okita. Um, and that's where this, this episode ends. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, for this one, I really like that it is based off of the Ikadaya incident. So I'm going to very quickly explain what this is in case people don't know. So the, Shins- the Shinsengumi are based off of a real uh, group in Japan called the Shinsengumi. And one of the most famous things that they ever did was the Ikadaya incident, which is the thing that got them basically the start of their rise. And this specific incident, which is the the attack on the anti-foreigner factions who are planning to set fire to the entirety of a place. Um, I don't remember exact place, but they were, their plan was to set fire to everything and um, take control of the head dude at the time. That's what they were going to do. Um, but then the Shinsengumi stopped it, and this was the start of like what rose the Shinsengumi up from the top. And funny enough, Okita is actually one of the people who did, in real life, actually participate in this incident so it was real nice to see oh yeah they go for it but this thing has been like referenced in multiple things it's even in rioni kenshin i think because i think the shinsengumi are in rioni kenshin as well right yes they are okita is also a character but he's dead before the plot begins Mm -hmm. so a version of this incident is kind of referenced in it but i'm not sure if they actually it's actually funny because all of these shinsengumi people are not in kenshin really the, the kenshin Shin, well like okita is in it in flashbacks to yeah when kenshin is like his assassin days um but they're not in the actual series the only one in the actual series is saito 
um, who is not one of these guys. He does eventually show up in Gintama because I googled it because I was curious. Yeah. Um, and there is a character that is that is Hajime Saito, but that's the only one that shows up in Kenshin. So there's no oh, yeah. Akita, no Hijikata, no Kondo or any of that. That's funny. I think he's one of the ones that actually. Uh survives in the real because i know a lot of the shinsengumi actually died like okita dies well, so okita's, kondo dies uh, uh okita's death i don't know if this is his historical death but in kenshin he dies from tuberculosis which i yeah. think is what the, his sister dies from in this right yeah that is also what is believed to have killed okita um they also say that some i guess depending on what you believe because you know this happened a long ass time ago, and historical records are historical records. But they say that during this incident is the first time that his tuberculosis actually showed up. Like this is where it would start. But it's hard to know if that's actually what happened, or if it was something where it's like he just coughed up blood because of an unrelated incident, or it's one of those things of like they knew he died of tuberculosis, and he also just so happened to cough up blood during this incident. But you know, hard to tell back then. Not <laughs> if we could go back in time yeah. and see and know, but. So I, the, the reason that I know so much, so much about this is that I literally, before watching this episode, had done this mission in uh, Like a Dragon Ishin, where you do where you attack the Igadaya and like Katsura was there and stuff like that. And so I was like, oh, this is based off of that. I'm surprised that I know as much as I know about this because of all the video games that just so happened to be from Japan and talk about it. So that was fun. Um... Uh, in terms of the actual plot, I like the beginning part where he's talking about, like, death flags, and he's talking about... The part where he says, like, when it looks like uh, things are going bad, he's like, when it, the the thing that you really don't want to do is that you don't want to be caught being talked out of character. Like, a character who was bad in the originally and then becomes good. Um, you know that the second they start mentioning things of, like, oh, yeah, let me go do this for you, you know that their time is up. And the re when, he, when it looks like that's happening to him, it, the realization is like, obviously that wouldn't happen to me because I was a good guy all along. Yeah, I've always been the good guy. <laughs> I've always been the good guy. I was like, oh, you are such a son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very funny. Really good. And also just the way he just fucking lays it into this girl. <laughs> he just completely like destroys her and knocks her out. It's really funny to me. Um... When he hands her off to the Odd Jobs crew, uh, I also really like because they have like this conversation of like, I don't know, she's saying this, she's doing this, take this cake and, you know, look into it. So he's like, so you're not denying or doing anything? He's like, I don't know, man, a lot of stuff happened. But if it did happen, it was likely his fault. That's all I'm going to say about it. And, um, which I, I thought was interesting, especially because this girl's like, uh, as funny as it is to see her knocked out when she wakes up and is starting to blame her for it it's like 100 percent serious you killed my dad you're a son of a bitch fuck you i'm gonna kill you and it's kind of a little case of like yeah i kind of understand where she's going if you actually legitimately did that because as far as they know the reason that she's so angry is that he was a um basically a citizen and the shinsengumi shouldn't have been doing that and then uh, gintoki realizes it a little bit later in the episode or even in the next episode he brings it up but he's like no, Kagura brings it up too, I think, it w is when she catches up because like, okay, first of all, you're way too good. If it was like literally any other member of the Shinsengumi, we would think that, okay, it was in the heat of the moment and it was an accident. But you're like way too good at what you do, which is killing people. So there's no way that we can actually legitimately think that if this guy was a civilian, you didn't kill him. It was an accident. Like there's no way for you to have accidentally have done this. So you're covering something up. And, uh... I actually like the the intrigue that kind of goes in the beginning because at the beginning I was like the second one the other Shinsengumi guy showed up I was like that guy killed him and I was like calling my shots all right that guy did it and then I was like he's gonna be end up evil and all this and I was like wrong by the end of it <laughs> where it's like okay yeah Okita actually did <laughs> kill him but he had a specific reason why he didn't want to bring it up um, so I ended up liking a lot of that uh, I liked a lot of just the Okita being an asshole because he's really an asshole for a vast majority of this, it, it, the, like this episode and the next. But he's an asshole in a way that kind of makes him endear. It's like that fine line that he walks, where like if any other, like if you could put Okita's actions to a villain, he'd make a very good villain. But I like him in Gintama, <laughs> which is really weird <laughs> to think about. Yeah, he he's he's like. It's because he's an obnoxious asshole, but then like he's just likable enough when it when push comes to shove that he like does the right thing. Yeah, like like this entire time when I'm thinking like him going through it, 
um, going through all this. I think he says something. I think it's at the end of this one or the beginning of the next one where he's like, you can't break out of these chains. And he's like, um, unfortunately, I, as, I'm, as I'm a sadist, I can dish it out, but I actually can't deal with it. <laughs> so yeah, these... Can't take the heat. <laughs> can't, I can't take the heat, which is pretty funny to explain why he's not able to get out of the, the chains without like some other assistance, which is pretty funny. Um, and and I also, it's also it's because he says not only that he says I sadist can't take the heat. I wish other people would consider how I feel more. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah, that's really good. Um, I like them talking to Katsura because it's just a silly. I don't know what the fuck Katsura is doing with his life where he's out here doing <laughs> mascot stuff, but it's really funny. Um, uh, I liked it when they were with the other Shinsen Gumi guy when they're doing all the the butt anal jokes, and this pays off in the way that. Um, when Yamazaki goes to report it to Hijikari, he's like, all I heard was like, I'm going to stick it up your ass and do this. And then Hijikari's like, all right, Yamazaki, we need to have a serious talk right here. What the Shinsengumi members choose to do in their own private lives are their own. <laughs> and he, he assumed this entire time that Okita was gay. <laughs> and he's like uh what he's like listen whatever he wants to stick up there it's fine as long as he's not breaking any rules it's okay and he's like i don't think i think you've completely lost this <laughs> sir i think you need to look into this further but i really did like his like moment of like ah uh, yes i understand what's going on here he's really into <laughs> get the gay sex uh really good so i like this uh the start of this arc and the like little two-parter i thought it was very interesting at the beginning and i like the funny parts of it that's how i feel how do you feel zen yeah it was good it was hmm. uh it was fine it didn't really wow me i don't think any of these episodes today really wowed me but this one was was fine hmm. i like okita i find it funny when he does shitty things to people so it was oh, good okay. And then let's continue on. Speaking of shitty things, the perfect segue into episode 187, <laughs> which is titled It's Goodbye Once a Flag is Set. Go ahead, Zen. So uh, we pick up with them all caught. Uh, one of the survivor people from the, the old gang tells her that actually... Um, Okita didn't kill the dad, and it was like a whole a whole thing, and Sogo covered it up to protect the girl so that nothing would happen to her. Um, what, what ended up happening was is that it turned out that the her father was actually a part of the anti-foreigner dudes, and he went to go stab the other Shinsengumi member, and Okita jumped in and killed him, and they decided to cover it up because they realized that the other dudes were forcing him to be a part of the group. So they would rather hide it and at least protect the last thing that he was doing. Basically, they had kidnapped his daughter and his wife, and he was forced to be a part of it. So that was the secret that they were hiding, is that they didn't want them to know. Um, and that's the way... Um, that's the thing that they were trying to hide. And as the guy was about to say, this, they're like explaining all this right now. Is it going back and forth? But yeah, that, that was the thing that they were trying to, to hide from it all. Sorry, continue. Okay, so so the, they're... they're trying to get out of the ropes and then uh, Okita's like I gotta take a shit really bad uh, they refuse to let him go because they just think he's trying to escape and then he like shits himself I guess um, <laughs> or it means at least makes it look like he shit himself <laughs> well I, I assume that he really did because Kagura is like oh my god it smells so bad I'm gonna be sick and then she throws up <laughs> um, fair enough yeah so then she vomits and then they get so grossed out by all of her uh Yato vomit, because it's like a ton of it, um, that they escape. Uh, Okita gets a sword and they run. They are trying to get away while um, Kagura carries the girl, but she gets shot in the leg, so she can't run anymore. So uh, while the two of them are wounded and hiding, Okita gets up and he's like, I'm not going to let any of you take a step closer past me. So you can just, I don't care what you try to do, I'm not letting a single person get by me. Uh, and they all rush him. And he kills a bunch of them, and so they start to shoot at him. He gets hit by a couple of bullets. Then he starts deflecting all the bullets with some swords. And then uh, as they start getting away, the girl is, like, crying, and Kagura realizes that she was awake the whole time. And she heard Okita's story, even though he didn't want her to hear. Um, so she kind of stayed quiet as, as to, like, I guess not fuck with his moment. I don't remember, I don't remember exactly why they said she didn't. 
Yeah, it, 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 it was it basically that, is that she wanted yeah. to not reveal it to him. Yeah, she wanted him to still have his secret, basically. Um, as they're, they're slowly escaping, Okita has killed the majority of them, but the leader is still there, and he's like, oh god, there's, there's even more of them now, like, I guess this is where I die. Uh, but then it's revealed that the reinforcements that show up are, like, Gintoki, Shimpachi, and the rest of the Shinsengumi that have already beaten up the rest of the gang. Uh, so then the, the last guy tries to run away, but then Okita gets him, uh, and he's like, who the hell snitched on me? <laughs> um, and then they get punished with having to do a bunch of paperwork. Uh, and then, so Okita's, like, doing a shitload of paperwork, and he's like, I'd rather just die. Like, that's his death <laughs> flag, is that he has to do paperwork. Um... And then he ends up getting bumped into, and he gets a note. And I don't believe that we ever see the contents of the note, but he looks at it and smiles and slips it into his pocket as he walks along with more cake and Tabasco sauce. Yes. Yep. That is, yep. You never know, but who knows? He says some things are probably best not said. So there we go. So, how do you feel about this one, Zen? I'll start with you. Uh, it was good. I liked it. I thought the. the the way they, they did the poop humor, it's not usually my favorite, but it was pretty funny that that's how they escaped. Was that this <laughs> shit humor? Um, it's his reaction you know, to where he's like, I'm not going to let anyone buy me, or super good. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just like murdering the shit out of people. And then when they're like, I don't get why he's not like dropping, and he gives the second speech of like, uh, you guys don't get it that I'm not moving from this spot even if I die. It doesn't matter what you do, and he just keeps killing more of them. Uh, very cool. Okita's a very cool character. Yeah. Um, we, we don't get to see it very often about the... We see it come up every once in like the last Shins and Gumi arc where he like went crazy murder, but the, the historical accurate Okita where he was just the craziest fucking murder machine in the Shins and Gumi. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was cool to see him here in that uh, context. Uh, it was it was cool. It was cool. It was not like the most emotional of because they definitely tried to do the emotional ending angle. You know, when Gintama always has these little mini arcs, someone gets an emotional mm -hmm. uh, wrap up at the end. It wasn't the most emotional, but I was like, oh, you know, that's pretty cute when yeah. when she slips him the note and all. A, f a feel good kind of just way of ending yeah. off. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I agree with you. I really liked it. I liked the bit where when it revealed like the villain guy is going to reveal to her, and we we learn about the incident, and then we cut back to them, and we see that Kagura gave her a headbutt to knock her the fuck out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is really funny, and it turns out that she was pretending the entire time, and she she heard all of it. It was pretty good. Um, the part where he's gonna go for shitting himself is really funny. Uh, probably because it, the Okita's the last person you would ever expect to actually do this. Uh, I think he, this officially now makes him the, he was like the final member of the Shinsen Gumi not to do a shit joke. I think this officially makes it so that now all of them have done it. Um, and also like he has like a specific saying later on when, um, they're escaping, which makes me think he didn't shit himself, is that Kagura asked him, because like, my anal sphincters aren't as weak as kondo <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, if that was Kondo, he would have done it. But I, you know, my sphincter built different. <laughs> Too strong. That was pretty good. Um, yeah, all the badass moments with him have been were really good, really cool. Um, and uh, yeah, overall, we liked it. It was a nice little two two arc. It had like the right amount, similar to you. I didn't get like the huge big emotional payoff, but I did fail. Would leave off going like, yeah, happy happy ending little bit of a the the serious parts that were serious they took it like gave it like like they, there was like no joke there was like no jokes of being like oh yeah okita killed that dad they kept that part like very like no whenever she was seriously talking about it it was serious it was all the stuff that was uh, built around it that was like the jokey built stuff so i appreciate that at most it would have been felt a little bit weird if they had started making like dad killing jokes if that yes. makes sense so i felt yes, it that would not have that would not have landed no, no, specifically. But no, they kept that that part of it serious, and he never makes any reference to it, so you can tell that he's keeping it serious in his own specific way. And it was just a nice way to look into his, like, mindset and also try and build a, like, heroic story around Okita, who is maybe the least heroic main hero of of the t of all of the main Gintama characters. But a very cool character. So that was episode 187. 
And we'll go on to one episode 188, which is an observation journey should be journal should be seen through to the very end. Go ahead, Zen. Uh, so we're in a school and they are like sharing their homework, which is an observation diary. And the, the student is telling the story of how he met um, Hasegawa, basically. He calls him Madao. Like he's like living in a, it's a whole thing. Um, basically, this kid is talking about how he basically took in Hasegawa. Um, and he stops him from killing himself because he's like goes to, he goes to, hang himself and then he fails so he goes and lays on the train tracks and he gets saved um and then he brings him home as like a pet and he gives him alcohol as like food um <laughs> then the, yeah, he the mother finds out and she's like oh my god you know my your your father was an alcoholic who was awful to us and then uh there's a terrible terrible storm it's like a like a monsoon um and hasagawa goes missing so the kid goes out to find him, um, and then the mother realizes that it's not a dog, but it's an old man. And so he, he goes to help them. He's like, oh my god, Madao is out in the rain. He's going to die. <laughs> um, and they both get sick, so Hasegawa nurses them back to health. Um, and he's like, I'll never, ever drink again because of, of you two almost dying to save me. Um, then he decides to go get a job, so he leaves to a job interview. Um, and there's another applicant there, and that ends up being the kid's abusive alcoholic father who wants to turn his life around and and reunite with his wife and child. Uh, so Hasegawa fakes being drunk and basically like intentionally bombs the job interview so that the guy will get it, so that he can fix his life. Um, they find Hasegawa in the park the exact same way that they were, that he was when they first found him. He's just like sitting on the bench. And the kid's yelling at him, and he's like, you're a liar. You said you'd never drink again. And he's, like, sobbing. And then he's like, I know that you're secretly the, the nicest samurai ever. Um, and he, like, sits in, uh, on the bench, and he's, like, taking a swig of what seems like it's supposed to be sake, but it's actually water. Um, and he's like, I've had it pretty good. And then the class, is it, we cut back to the class, and they're all crying, and the credits are rolling. Um, and they're like, that was amazing. That was like a like a novel, and then it was revealed that the child's mother wrote it because her name was in the credits as the yeah, writer the, of the the, the, the movie credits. Are start playing. Yeah. He's like, oh, it came with credits. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really funny. So I want to say the the the. Pro- Do you know who's voicing the little kid in this? No, Naruto. Really? Yeah, the That's same J- Japanese VA as Naruto, uh, Junko Takakuchi, or uh, forgive me if I'm saying that. it's not on purpose. Takuchi, uh, she voices this little kid. <laughs> you can definitely hilarious. hear it. Yep, yeah, pretty, pretty good. You can hear, especially, uh, I didn't realize it until the crying. It was like when the crying started, I was like, why does this sound so familiar? <laughs> it activated something in my head. Um,. So for this one, I really like the setup of it because it starts with like a kid giving his like journal and the kid's like, oh yeah, here is mine, observational journal. And everyone's like, yay. Then when the teacher asks this kid to come up and he starts giving it, the teacher starts like going back and like, this is a little bit inappropriate. And I think it's after the whole hanging, like how like Madao is like, why did he build a swing? And it was like clearly a noose to hang himself with. Yeah, it was just a noose. And the teacher was like, um, oh, I think we have to stop this. Because he keeps asking, he's like, I keep asking Mario, when will you grow? And um, when will you bloom? And then the teacher's like, we have to, I'm, I'm going to put a stop to this. It's getting too out of hand. And then you cut to the, the kids are like, no, no, keep going. I want to hear if the Mario ever grows. <laughs> I want to hear him bloom. And they goes like, Mario, what? And they, they all start cheering for the story. He's like, I don't know how all you kids got so invested in it. I don't know at what point was it with the noose. I don't know. I guess. Okay, continue on. But like, uh, get to the, only say the important stuff. He's like, okay. Mario is living with us. He's like, you cut too much. How the hell did this guy end up living in your house? Um, I also really like it because in the beginning he like talks about like at one point he puts down like um, when they talk about his father, they say like, I wonder when my mother stopped trusting men. And then they they cut to a flashback, and the teacher's like, Did you just cut to a flashback in your journal? 
And they totally do. <laughs> it's really funny. The setup for it uh, was really well. What they go for the different days. And uh, in general, this is like maybe the most depressed we've ever seen Hasegawa. Because uh, usually we see Hasegawa and he's like some form of depressed. But this is like next level, like not talking to anyone. Just drinking, <laughs> sitting there. Um, and I also really like that when Hasegawa starts getting better. And he starts to look like his life is going to turn around. Uh, especially because um, it starts to build off of the idea of like his mom asked him was like, "How would you feel if if you, for you to do you like want a father?" Is this, she's like looking in to see if the reason she, that he is so invested in Mario is because it reminds him of his dad, and he's like, "No, he's just like I can't imagine ever calling Mario my father. That's just weird." <laughs> he, <he's, laughs> Um, but they even have moments between Hasegawa and the mom where it makes it maybe looks like a little bit like maybe there's some form of a romance kind of built in there, which is really funny when you realize the mom had been writing this the entire time. Because in my head, I was going, Hasegawa would never like cheat on his wife though. And, but then it makes a hundred percent sense when you find out that the mom had been re- writing it the entire yeah. time. <laughs> maybe putting a little bit in there. Sure. Let's go with that. But yeah, I thought it was really well told. It was really, it was a very cute story as well of seeing Hasegawa and seeing his characters as well. Of like he had the chance to potentially like have his entire life come back to him, and he instead chose to help a kid out, and that's the right thing to do. And you know, he's a he's a useless old man, but he's our useless old man. <laughs> <laughs> so I really liked it. How do you feel, Zen? Yeah, it was cute. It was silly. Uh, it reminded me of those like Hallmark stories with the lost dog. Yeah, except for with Hasegawa uh, in it. Yeah, except for Hasegawa was the lost dog. Uh, it was good. It was really good. I enjoyed mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. All right. Now we'll move on to the next one, which is episode 189, which I will say for me is officially, if we were ever doing a category awards, this is currently number one for the most usually when there's a part a and a part b there's a quality to a story that goes onto one side i think this is the most lopsided of one oh, part easily, b because one of them is literally just only for the purpose of a single joke at the end yes um, and the other one and one of them is like an entire sad mini arc all at one in, in its own thing yeah i think this was like so here's the funny bit is that i remember when i was looking this one up because i remember going like i only remember that this one was like kind of a gundam thing in the notes that i received and then i looked back and i saw the other parts and i was like yeah this is a gundam one i think this is a two-parter though i might need to rewatch it because i don't specifically remember the other one it's just another thing that i have to rewatch. And i was like that explains a lot <laughs> because I, I was like blown away because i was expecting just like oh it's one of these like gundam episodes okay so i was like stealing myself for a gundam episode and i did not get a gundam episode no so go ahead zen we'll start with part a oh my god <clears throat> it's better so... to take care of this year's business within the year but once the year is about to end you figure that you might as well put it out until the next year for a fresh start that's how the end of the year goes go ahead zen <laughs> so uh, there is a, a guy who's researching the war with the Amanto, and he's like, I want to know about, about the war. And this guy's like, oh, sure, you know, there was, uh, there was Katsura, there was Takasuji, and then there was Sakamoto, the, you know, the legendary ones, and he doesn't mention Gintoki. And this guy is like, no, I know the truth, there was another one. And he's like, oh, so you know, like, uh, and he's like, yeah, well, technically I don't know anything, but I know that he was real, so I want you to tell me about him too. And the guy's like, all right, all right, I'll tell you. And it cuts to a battlefield, and it's like the the White Devil was what he was known by. Um, and it's like they're all pinned down by bombs and stuff. And they're like, what do we do? We we got to get out of here. And then Takasuji's like, if we can't. We'll get blown up if we try to escape. We we have to, we got to fight. And then Katra's like, wait, he's still here. He can save us. And then uh, one of the ships, all the all the alien ships, all start getting destroyed. And they're like, it's him, it's him, the White Devil. And it's like it's supposed to be Gintoki. And then it's just revealed that it's a Gundam. <laughs> and they're like. Yeah, it's Gundam! And the reporter's like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and he's like, no, you don't understand. It's the 30th anniversary of Gundam. And the guy's like, what the fuck? And then it just ends. Yeah. <laughs> That's literally it. My favorite thing here is that they got Takatsuji's VA for his one line for this flashback. Yeah, the only thing he says. This is the first line Takatsuji has said since we last saw him and they brought him back for the, the Gundam episode. <laughs> 
for the part A of Gundam part. Not even like a full on episode. Um, apparently, also this reporter and the dude he's talking to look like characters from Gundam. As again, as we may, I'm bringing this up every single time. As someone who does not know that much about Gundam, that will always be the thing that will be like the thing. It's like, oh, this is a clear tell. I'm like, I don't know anything about Gundam. These yeah, characters I, just I would not have gotten that from those characters either. <laughs> no, but apparently, if you know them, it's like, oh, okay, these two are clearly Gundam characters. This is a Gundam build. But when you don't know that, and you're just like, okay, let me, t- yeah, I want to hear more about Gintoki's past. Let's go. White white demon, that's a cool name, and then it's just a fucking Gundam at the just end. A Gundam, yep. And then they go like they hit you like it's like remember we were gonna do two of these, and it's like oh god damn it, here's the second one of these. <laughs> god damn it. So yeah, that's that's far day. That's how <laughs> that's about how I feel. I did like the, the that it was just straight up a Gundam at the end. <laughs> And that they brought back Takazuji's VA. It's a very, like, silly thing. Unfortunately, I just don't know enough about Gundam to be like, oh, yeah, I loved it. It's just more of a case of, like, they got me again with another goddamn Gundam <laughs> joke. Go ahead, Zen. How do you feel? Uh, so, it was fine. It was a, it was a Gundam joke. I-, I thought it was pretty funny when the dust cleared and he was literally just, like, the original Mobile Suit Gundam. Like, that yeah. was it. That's it wasn't it. like a Gundam, like a parody Gundam, like a fake robot. It was literally just. They didn't the even try to make the gu- the Gundam look like in Toki. <laughs> it was yeah. just straight up a Gundam. It was just yeah. It wasn't like a, a robot in Toki. It was just Gundam. And they don't even use the silhouette either of like the nope. the the him looking in his like old uh, in his old uh, war days. It's just straight <laughs> they use the silhouette, and then when it's time to reveal, it's like it's a Gundam. Let's go. Um, yeah. That's part A. Now let's go on to part B, which is actually just the episode. Radio exercises are socials for boys and girls. Go ahead, Zen. Uh, so, Takara goes to these physical fitness meetups on the radio where a bunch of people like go uh, to, to exercise together. Um, slowly but surely, people stop going. Uh, they just get like less and less popular. So eventually, uh, it's just her and this other kid left, and they're the only two kids there because it's like all old people are like fitness nuts, and then they're the only two kids that are there. Eventually, the only two left, so they kind of hang out that day. Um, and the kid's name is is Hiyashi, and he's like, "Yeah, oh, I knew that uh, the guy wasn't going to come today, so I brought a stamper. Do you want me to stamp your card?" Because she has like a stamper card for every day she goes to the thing, and she's trying to do every day. Um, and she finds out that the kid is exercising because he has an illness that makes him really weak and it's hard for him to to do much. So he wants to do this exercise thing every day all summer to um, to just kind of prove to himself that he can do it because he's you know he's a sickly guy. Mm-hmm. And so Conqueror's like, all right, we're going to do it together. And no matter what happens, whether you know it's it's like a nightmare, rainstorm, or there's a war going Spears. on, we're still going to do it. Yeah, Rain, it's raining sleep. spears, we're still going to do it. Um, uh, eventually they do keep doing it and you know Gintoki and the crew help run it for them because the guy who was originally doing it isn't doing it anymore so they all like different different characters will show up and help them um, and then Gintoki is like we're not going to do it today because it's raining and the, the radio cancelled the thing and Kagura's like what do you mean it's cancelled and he's like you know the, we're not going to go do it but I'll, I'll stamp your card later it doesn't count if it rained like it's fine uh, but then it turns out that um the boy kept his promise to go do it even in the rain, and Kagura didn't, so he got really sick because he's already sickly. So the rain like really fucked him up. Um, and then Kagura is goes to visit him in the hospital and starts uh, crying that like she broke his promise and it broke the promise or whatever. And then then he needs to get better and come back so that they can finish. So she takes both of their stamp cards. Um, and she does double the exercise to stamp both of the cards for both him and her. Um, and then another day, it's raining just as bad as it was before. And the radio that she was using to do the exercising finally broke down. And she breaks it and then lays down and starts crying. And then Gintoki shows up in the rain. And then more and more of the main cast show up to uh, start doing the exercises with her. And then it's revealed that she has like this giant stamp card that's like a bunch of different pieces of paper all taped together and stamped for like months and months and months of exercising um 
And then the rain finally stops when she sees a hand on her shoulder and she turns around and smiles. And I presume that it is the kid, the guy, the kid, uh, and he's not dead or whatever. Mm, okay. And that's where it ends. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say that it's a little bit left up to interpretation because of some things that uh, the parents reveal about the kid's sickness, which is basically that the kid actually, his, his, like, his sickness isn't something that you actually recover from. He's dying. And there's like actually no way for them to actually stop it, and so it makes it end up it ends up being a little bit of a case of like them not showing it a little bit different. But anyway, that's uh, that's for something I like. <laughs> I told them before this I had to write some stuff down because this really hit <laughs> pretty hard at three forty eight a.m. in the night. <laughs> but I'll start with you. Tell me how you feel about it, Zen. It was good. It was it was a very mm-hmm. like out of the blue emotional episode for what was all just kind of like a stupid two-parter it definitely caught me off guard um the 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 shot of kagura crying in the rain i was like god damn <laughs> like, yeah jesus they're really going in um but it was it was fine it was sweet i like when kagura gets emotional moments she's a good character yeah i like also when they get to let her be a kid and this yeah. is one of those cases where she actually is hanging out with a kid her age and doing kid-like things and having kid-like fun and dealing with kid-like issues. Uh, before I get into um, my giant soliloquy here at the end, I'll say the things I liked. I liked them when all the dudes, different people showed up to be their instructors. Also, the daily <laughs> instructors, the, the, the like exercises that they do at the beginning slowly become more and more weird as time goes on. Like At the beginning, yeah. it's like, oh yeah, put your hands up. And then one of them was like, put your uh, legs out like you're a stripper. All right, now you go do this. I think eventually it gets to the point where it's like when Kotsar shows up, uh, uh, put your arms up and down. Uh, make it like you're running away from <laughs> the... Yeah, that you're a member of the anti-foreigner faction running away from the Shinsengumi. <laughs> and then they show up and then Kagura starts yelling at the Shinsengumi. He's like, oh, how have you not caught him yet? And he's like, <laughs> just catch him already. As he's fucking running around. Um, when they do for Hasegawa, is like, lay it down like you're just uh, a Madio and you're useless. He's like, this isn't even exercise. <laughs> this is just insulting me. <laughs> um, uh, for Sachans, it was a lay down on all fours. Let me see. Like yeah, It was like, uh, come down yeah, on all fours. and down on all fours and ask to be... Like like a bitch waiting to be punished, and then she's like, "I'm yeah. ready for it. Let's go." <laughs> oh, which is very funny. For Tay, it was like, D- "Put your arms up and down like a gorilla." She's like, "Oh yeah, yeah. you get yeah." Just like she got pissed off when they <laughs> called her a gorilla because yeah. it's a condo insult. Yep, and I like it when Gitoki shows up because he's like, "I was clearly hungover when you brought me here. <laughs> I was very clearly nursing a hangover," which is what he's doing for the entirety of this episode in the beginning when Kagura wakes up to go do something is that he's clearly suffering from a hangover and he watches her like destroy the door opening and then just falls back asleep. <laughs> yeah. Is... She, every time she leaves in the morning, she like destroys half of the building. She jumps through it. Yep. Yep. Uh, really funny. Um, I like the, the little bits here from the friend that she got with the dude there. I like the kind of buildup that they had, especially like the, like the childlike, um thought process of uh, him actually going in the rain he's like well you said in the rain so i went in the rain and that's a very like kid like response that sounds like something's like okay but i didn't actually you know it's a figure of speech but when you're talking to a child <laughs> it's very hard for some children to get what is a figure of speech and be like no 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 you said that so i'm gonna go do it it's like don't no one actually expects you to go out in the rain and do stuff like that but it's very kid like um I like the bit where she was just doing it on her own and she gets like a bunch of the stamp cards mixed up and not mixed up, but she just keeps getting it stamped. It actually reminded me a lot of, do you remember that episode of Futurama where Fry's dog waits for him? Yes. (laughs) It reminded me of that minus the crippling feeling of the dog waits so long and dies there. That that is the only thing that is missing for me here is the is the pure set where the future Rama episode ends and you're just like unbelievably le- unbelievable levels of sad. Um, this one gives off a little bit more of a hopeful kind of look for it. So, um, to get into why, because this one ended up just like you, I was like really out of nowhere how hard it ended up hitting me, and then by the end of it, I was like still like experienced. I was like, why am I? 
feeling this way. It's like there's something deeper here for me, so I think I finally formulated it out. Uh, as I do my best thinking is at 4 a.m., uh, two hours before bed is when I do my best thinking. <laughs> That's the best time for you to be doing any thoughts, so this is what I got. So obviously there is the main interpretation here, which is that the kid eventually does get better and everything's fine. The way I think I ended up seeing it in the way I watched it is that I see it as is that the kid did not actually end up, like, living. I saw it as him dying. And that Kagura kept going through the motions, which is doing the exercises and kept, like, getting the stamps thinking, like, okay, it, something's going to change if I just keep doing this. And then when the day comes back, which is a similar day to when she wasn't there, that's when all shit hits for the fan. That's when it's like it all comes like crashing down on you and you're like, oh shit. It's like the lowest weak point of someone who is actually grieving someone. But then that's when Gintoki comes in. He does his dramatic entrance and he's doing like the, he's repeating what he's hearing on the, on the exercise tapes and he's telling her to get up. And then you see the others who have been there with her and they kind of like help her move on. And then, and then at the end, when you see that everything's kind of, like, good again, and you see, like, the hand reach out, and you don't see the kid, but there's still, like, a specific, like, presence kind of there, and then she's able to, like, actually move on. And that's kind of, I think, the way, when I was, like, that's the best way I can think of in my head of seeing it. And the reason I think I end up seeing it that way is just because <laughs> something about this episode hits, like, deep down of that feeling of, like knowing someone who doesn't have like a lot of time left and just like trying to enjoy life if that makes sense and while i was going through it this is really fucking hard for me to go through <laughs> um while i was going through that i just like it just like hit me like a whole bunch of different things i was like this is fucking crazy i don't see it so that's why i think i ended up putting it down i think it ended up being an episode where i was like this is a fantastic kind of view of seeing it one thing and the good thing about specific art things is that i really do think it's also just as likely that the kid is okay <laughs> and everything i put down is um stuff that i am interpreting from the art itself but that's the kind of cool thing about art is that a lot of the times art can speak to different people in different kind of ways and for this specific episode it definitely like i ended up seeing it that way does that make sense am i am i yeah. speaking yeah that makes sense all right I can I can see that interpretation. Yeah, I think that's just one. That's not I'm not I'm not here to be like, oh yeah, this is what he was going for. This is what no no no. Because I think what ends up happening a lot of times is that when people give how they feel a specific episode goes, is that they take it as like, this is the way it was written. When in actuality, it is not the way it was written. This is the specific way that the author wrote it down, and then through the specific actions that you see here, this is the interpretation I took. And that's something where I think it ends up being the cool thing about... That's how you can tell when something is, like, well-written. Where it can come off in both ways. <laughs> where it's like, yeah, it's this story of this kid and he gets better. But then there's another way of seeing it as well. Where it's like, yeah, you can kind of have it this way as well. And I think both yeah, ways end up being... Yeah, like they show his face. Yeah, the, the, exactly, at the end. But, you know, that's how I took it as. So I really ended up liking this episode. <laughs> It was really a, a yeah, hell of an episode like, to hit. They put a lot into it for half of a two-parter. <laughs> it's insane how well built it is. Like you said, the like the images of like Kagura like crying in the like I don't think there's been outside of like her breakdown after dealing with the um, the uh, the in flames arc. There hasn't really been that much like serious crying. Like she obviously cries when there is like a like a silly moment and she's acting like kid like and that's different. But actual like breaking down it doesn't happen very often. So um and yeah, in general I really like that image of like Gintoki standing there and he's like saying like all right, stand up. It's time to get some some exercise in. And then everyone is there and like you see like Sachan uh Otai is there, Shinpachi's there, Katsura's there, Hasegawa's there. And it just reminds me of like man, I just really fucking love the characters of Gintama. <laughs> yeah, they're great. It's it's such a good ensemble cast. Like it usually there are characters that eventually you're like ah, that guy irritates me, but not in this show really. 
No, they just kind of show up, and it's another thing where it's really funny, where it's like, Sachan, she doesn't have much moments, but for some reason, she just feels like it works perfectly fine here, where it's like, I still feel like it's in character for her to show up and help Kagura. If, <laughs> when, in most cases, it would be like a case of like, I haven't seen this character in forever, it's like, whatever, but no, I think it ends up working perfectly fine here, especially because the exercises that she did help with are <laughs> more tailored for her, but yeah. I think it ended up being a... I'm really glad that uh, we cut off the episodes here at 189 because I would not have been able to continue on. <laughs> if we yeah, had, fair. Yeah, if it had been any other way. But there you go. That's episode 189. And that is it for Gintama this week. Uh, a, a real, like, like a Venn... Like, if you look at... What is those things called? The Venn diagrams? or Venn like diagram. A, yeah. A Venn diagram of, like ups and downs <laughs> for different completely different reasons uh but a hell of a hell of a good time watching and talking about it for sure all right so now we're here at the ending bit where we're gonna say where can you see zen after all this if you haven't had enough zen you can head over to zen's channel where he does shonen and chill and also I started covering the Jujutsu Kaisen game Phantom Parade. I remembered the name of the game because of how cool it sounded when you talked about it in <laughs> Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> uh, go over there for him more. I have. Uh, th- th- I'm now doing my update. Have I seen Akagurabachi and the uh, the other one that made Zen angry? Not yet. Continue to look forward to the day where I'm going <laughs> to show up one day and say I've read both. <laughs> You're caught up all of a sudden. <laughs> That's how I'm gonna, just going to be like. And then we're just going to have a random 20 minute discussion about both of them in the middle of an episode. <laughs> That'll be the best part about it. Uh, whenever I catch up on it. But yeah, you can go check out Zen there. Uh, for more me stuff, you're already on the number one channel featuring me um, right here, uh, which features Shonen Archive and a bunch of other yeah, stuff. The vintage Wokey channel? The Vintage Wokey channel is my channel. <laughs> mm. You want to go back and look at my history, you can see the early days of um, my Dokkan videos. Uh, did you, oh, you know what's really... Uh, most recently with me and my brother, we I somehow stumbled into old videos I did for the Dokkan channel back in the day, for the, the Reddit uh, YouTube account, way, way, way back in the day, uh, before I started even doing videos on here. Um... And it's really funny because I'm doing it. I'm trying to do like a dog, like a d- gotcha video. Do you ever have you ever gone back and seen old videos of you and just gone, oh man, what the hell was I doing? Yep. Yeah, <laughs> it's the worst. I hate watching my old videos. I think there should be a day where we both look at old videos of ours and just like critique them and look at them because <laughs> I think it'd be really funny to do. Uh, it, this one specifically, it was one of the ones I never released. I said hello everyone and welcome back to another Dock and Battle video. Um, there's never been a better time to be playing Dokkan, and then I go, under my breath, oh, that's just not true, though. And then I hit stop recording! (laughs) (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Another one which is really funny, because it's just gameplay, is of, I was doing, like, a, a fight, and it was, like, um one of the old Dokkan Fest fights, and then it gets to the part where I'm about to get killed, and then you just see me close the app. <laughs> and then I was like, I started laughing my ass. I was like, why did I do that? And then I remembered back in the old days, you could close the app and the turn started over again in Dokkan. Yeah, the turn would reset. I was like, oh shit, that's what I was doing. I was resetting it to try and make a good video. And I was going, oh, fuck this. I, I died. I was like doing it like a three chill team. I think it was one of my many videos of trying to make a chill team happen, so it was fun. If you want to see old vintage Wokey stuff, you can go into my old videos. And if you want to see some new stuff, you can. I'm going to try my best to try and put up those stream recordings. I'm a little bit de- delayed on the Pokemon ones because eventually we are going to get back into uh, Monday streaming for the second one, and I want to make sure to have all that up before that happens. Um, but yeah, you can check out some other stuff featuring me and Zen. We put up the uh, Christmas ice cream bunny did, did i tell you about <laughs> um what someone put down as a comment before i got rid of it no uh someone put down can you please shut up and just watch the movie <laughs> 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 and i was about to comment for this movie <laughs> for oh, yeah, the ice cream bunny 
Oh, I was like, my bad, we weren't giving Thumbelina the proper respect that it deserved. Yeah, dude, Thumbelina's got shooters. <laughs> Apparently so, but I was like laughing because I was like, this one had to come from someone who was just interested in uh, Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny, and not us in it, and <laughs> it was really funny to see. I was like, alright, go find it somewhere else, my guy. Good luck with you. I didn't reply, I just got rid of it. I was like, alright, whatever. Peace out. Didn't like it. Didn't appreciate it. Apparently we talked too much. We should have given it some more space to, oh, oh who will pull my sleigh <laughs> from out the sand? Yeah, oh, we didn't please. let the art breathe. No, we didn't, unfortunately. We just talked too much. We had no idea what that gorilla was thinking when he was trying to pull the sleigh of Santa. <laughs> Yeah, if you haven't seen that uh, movie, definitely go watch us watching that movie because it was, uh, as Zen said, one of the worst movies he's ever had to watch. <laughs> and next year, maybe it will be something, maybe a little bit less worse, or maybe as bad. I still haven't decided. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, it'll be just as bad. <laughs> Knowing me, yes. Probably. Yeah, probably. And yet, that's it for Show and Archive, everyone. What are we going to be doing for next week? Hopefully next week we will be covering episodes 190, 191, 90, 192, and uh, 193 and 194. And then after that, we'll cover the Diviner arc, and then we are going to be done with Season 4 of Gintama. And we will talk about the really weird Yorinoku Gintama, and then we will head off into the new season of Gintama a little exclamation point where it is a new i guess a gintama in chosen is i guess what it would be called but it's also like gintama overtime apparently is what the rough translation uh we'll figure it out there's a lot of stuff going on here with the upcoming gintama stuff that we'll have to cover but that means we're not we are once we hit the two oh well, so funny enough we also already did episodes 200 and <laughs> 201 <laughs> So you can see that as well. Yeah, um, the Christmas the Christmas episode. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and then once we finish these episodes, it, we're only going to be 169 away from finishing. I think we finish it this year, Zen. I think we do. I can see it. I, could, I think we can do it. Yep, and then we'll finish that one. We'll get to see that second movie. We'll get to see the final movie and maybe even see those live-action movies. So we can see Benny Zakura one more time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> What's a Gintama watch if you don't watch Benny Zakura three or four times? Exactly. We're going to, by the end of this, it's going to be insane amounts. And I can't wait for them to announce it coming back again and them figuring out a way to do Benny Zakura one more time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's the end for this episode of Sean Archive. If you want to show support, you can always leave a like. Um comment down below it does help out funny enough as i always say though you don't have to worry about watching it is enough for us uh because this channel is supported by fago videos <laughs> and they're doing really good <laughs> yo i had an insane 2023 <laughs> let's go let's go <laughs> can't wait to continue that into 2024 that will let uh us be able to release videos like this and i don't have to worry that much because i know that the fago videos are carrying me on their back <laughs> they're basically like uh this is pbs and they're like mainstream television <laughs> 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 supported in part by viewers like you actually at the start of all the show archive videos we just said this is today's video is sponsored by the put up fago video that i released recently <laughs> That's what I'm gonna start doing. <laughs> Just gonna say today's video was sponsored by da 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 da. Thank you very much. But yeah, that's the end of Shonen Archive, everyone. Happy New Year as we get more into more Shonen Archive stuff. Uh, we're gonna be finishing up with Jujutsu Kaisen pretty soon, and we're gonna look into hopefully finishing up Kuroko's, and then we'll look into what's next after that. Hell and yeah, Kuroko. Yeah. Let's go. I can't wait to fully dive. We're gonna, we're, I'm gonna say right now, no third show added until we're 100% done with Kuroko. Yeah, <laughs> that is my current uh, feeling. It needs to happen. 100%. I need to see the rest of it. I love Kuroko. But yep, that's it, everyone. Till next time, say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out.